short update on the tiny houseboat. I need to get off the trailer. I have two floating dock jobs that require this trailer. So, houseboat's getting put on hold. This is how I get it off the trailer. I lower the tongue all the way to the ground. I block up my rear. Using what I have. Right now, the, the back is fully on the, these barrels. She supported. So my next step is to add some, see where these holes are? I got some two by six bracing that goes down to the ground. I connect the bracing together. And I make another set further up. I'll slide the trailer out, put another set of bracing in the middle. Secure it. Then slide the trailer up. Another brace in the front, followed by two more barrels in the front. And that's how I get it on or off the trailer by myself on land. It just requires a few tools, a jack to get the, once I get the height, the tractor can only pick up so much. Um, I can pick it up maybe eight inches off the ground with the, with the tractor. But it's not enough to get the, the crazy wheel down so i use that jack to get it high enough to drop the crazy wheel then i use the crazy wheel as a jack to raise it up to get the back off the trailer so i stated my next step is to put two braces in the rear tie them in together then uh i guess i can put the middle braces i can drop my tongue down then the, the boat is going to float off of the trailer i can slowly pull the trailer out and block it and brace it as I go. And then, um, Wednesday is the day we're doing spray foam. Today's Saturday. Uh, today, as you can see in the sky, we got rain coming today, rain coming Sunday. I've got a job to go do Monday. Uh, Tuesday, I'm off. Wednesday, Wednesday morning, we're gonna do the spray foam in the interior. But by Wednesday, I should be building one of the floating docks that I have ordered. So I doubt I'll be working on the houseboat. But you never know. Maybe I'll jump back and forth. But I do have two 8x20 floating docks to build for the customers. So that's going to eat up my time. Which is a good thing. Business is good. But yeah, I just want to show you all how I get it on and off of the blocks and on and off the trail on, on land now i could go launch this thing and put it in the water and leave it in the water for two weeks while i build the docks i don't want to do that i'd rather have it on land for the fact that i'm spray foaming wednesday it's a lot a lot easier to access right here uh the spray foam rig is going to pull up in that driveway right there we'll run the hose out and spray foam to where but this is in the water i have to find a biocide that's suitable for access for a 30 foot double axle trailer and a dually to better access so that's gonna work out good oh uh, gonna do what i gotta do thank y'all for tuning in i'll uh, i'll update maybe once the foam is uh in but that's really nothing special i'm sure you all seen closed cell spray foam if you haven't there's plenty of videos i even have a few videos on it that's, that's kind of what i do for a living closed cell spray foam i don't spray it I'm part of the process, but I don't do the actual spraying. I'm the guy that pushes the buttons, stretches the hose out, and makes sure the guy spraying doesn't run out of material. So, again, thank y'all for tuning in. Sorry it's such a small update and a little progress. And this, if you're wondering what this is, this is a strong back. I had a buckle between two studs that curved out. This is applying pressure inward. Once the spray foam is applied, this comes off. And I had a buckle inward right here. I had to add two strong backs right here. That's why I need to hurry up get the spray foam in. Because before I had the camper windows, we had a lot of rain. Before I had all the windows and the doors installed. And of course, humidity and moisture got inside the cabin. And the buckle the plywood. I finally got it to dry out. And I could probably pull that brace off. The buckle's not going to return. But I just left it on there until after the foam sprayed. But it's temporary. And uh, once, once the foam is sprayed, I'm going to build the interior. And eventually I'm going to sand down all my paint droppings and overspray. I'm going to repaint blue, gray. And I bought the lumber to make a strip 
across the top all the way I just hadn't, hadn't got to it yet and I, I may put a strip from this handrail all the way to that one sort of as a I guess a rub rail because my cabin is only offset about one inch from the end right here I plan on a two inch rope bumper right here so that's gonna give me three inches from the end of the bumper to the cabin so some docks you pull up to have really tall pylons if I take a side wave my side of my cabin could could bump into the pylons so if I add a it'd be like a decorational strip but it's, it's also going to serve purpose as a rub rail so I don't bust through the cabin with a pylon or have a pylon rubbing against my cabin it's one of those things it's going to be ugly no matter how I approach it so I think I'm, I'd rather have it for a peace of mind I'm definitely going to have the one on top uh, it's not really needed again, but it's gonna hide my canvas gap, which you can see It's gonna go over that canvas gap and Two inches down from my roof is my main two by four uh, wall plate. So I'm gonna screw into that But Slow process I got so much going on all the time, but it's work is coming along Thank you all for viewing Stay tuned and see y'all in the next one